Hi again and welcome to week two of Introduction to Journalism. Today we're going to talk about writing the news story, writing journalistically. It is different, as we've said before, than other forms of writing. But it's simple, it's clear, and it just tells the story and nothing else. Now, you would have covered this most probably in, in your readings for the week, uh, in the course material in week one. And uh, in week two, the course material develops more into news values. But in this talk today, I just want to go over writing the news story because, because it's, it's, I guess, the basis for everything journalistic. Whether we're working in print, whether we're working in television, whether we're working in radio or online. So I guess writing the news story, um, you probably heard, heard mention of the concept of the inverted pyramid. That is, you have the important stuff at the top of the story going down an inverted pyramid to the bottom with the least important. That is the traditional and basic structure of a news story. It still works in newspapers. Um, it doesn't work in broadcast and online. It can and it may not. And, and I guess to, to understand that, we, we get back to how the concept of the inverted pyramid started. It was in the days that, that uh, newspapers weren't laid out on, on computers where you could just with a dragging a mouse make a, a photograph bigger and smaller uh, to, to get a layout and make everything fit. It was in the days of galleys or even before where strips of type were pasted up or set and, uh, and the, the, the photographic uh, plates were of a fixed size. Therefore, to trim, trim the page, if an advertisement's got to go in or something like that, to trim the page, the stories in a newspaper traditionally are always cut from the bottom. And uh, that's how the balance was, uh, was made. These days, it's no, not as important in that respect because there are a lot of other ways uh, that, that, as I said before, we can balance up a page, take up the slack, change the size of photographs, uh, things like that size of heads, it's all just a, a click of the mouse button these days. But it still don't build a new story to something important at the end because it still can get cut for whatever reason. So the idea is to have, the again, the important stuff at the beginning going down in the inverted pyramid. Now, as I said before, that doesn't hold true for broadcast media, uh, but it's a, a good concept to keep in mind. I, I guess the one thing that is across all forms of journalistic writing, whether you're writing for print, television, radio or online, is the first paragraph. That is exceptionally important. If you can't write a first paragraph that gets the reader, listener, viewer in, attracts their attention, as I say, gets their face up out of the Cocoa Pops and, and, and listen, uh, you might as well, the, the, you know, you might as well not write the story because they quite possibly won't read it. So that first paragraph, work on that right through this course, the next 12 weeks, make that your focus because it almost is all, the first paragraph. And again, I'll, I'll talk briefly about paragraph size. Mostly in, in journalistic writing, paragraphs are usually one sentence and, and the, the lead par or that introductory paragraph, never any more than 25 words. You can say a lot in 25 words if, if you're careful. Um, there are a couple, as you said about writing the news story, there are, there are a, couple, a couple of platitudes, uh, acronyms or whatever you like to call them, tricks that we use to just, did we get all, all the story? And there are lots of these. Um, you'll, you'll meet them, every newsroom, every newspaper that you go into, um, they, they will have a different idea. But the most common are the five W's and an H. Uh, Quite a lot of people, particularly when you're starting out, will put a, a, a printout on this beside your, your workstation. So that's the who, what, when, where, why, and how. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. You go through your story, write your story, and check that. If you've got all those things, who are we talking about? Have you got the names right? You know, uh, What's it all about? When did it happen? Where did it happen? What caused it, why, and how did it come about? It just, you're not going to get all of those every time, but it's a good guideline. And another one that's covered in this course is the ABC of journalistic writing. That's accuracy, brevity, and clarity. Now, accuracy, 
That's the cornerstone of journalism. Make sure you get people's names right, get the spelling right, make sure that the, the association or, or department they're from is right, get the, 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 the situation where you are, and, and you do that through a trusty old journalist notebook. And uh, you just use these to continually write down in. The only exception to that is maybe radio, sometimes, and television, where you'll ask those questions even before an interview. Just get the name. Can you spell your name, please? Yes, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, ABC, accuracy, brevity, keep it brief. News stories are, on the whole, capsules of information. They, they get a lot of information into the reader or the viewer or the listener in a very compact and condensed way so they can swallow their news and they say, oh yeah, fair enough. And the third is clarity. Clear writing so that it isn't muddied by bad grammar or convoluted sentences. Crisp, clean writing or under the ABC, clarity. So that's accuracy, brevity, clarity. ABC of journalistic writing. Now the voice um, in newspapers it's always the active voice. In television, the active voice. In radio, the active voice. All journalistic writing is in the active voice, not the passive. Now, what do I mean by this? Read your notes, and I want you to go now and find out two examples, or find out an example, I should say, or write two sentences. One in the active voice, one in the passive voice. Get out and do a bit of researching. You'll remember better that way. And uh, tenses, newspapers, were always right in the past tense. Radio, always in the present tense. So, Mr. Smith said in a newspaper, Mr. Smith says in radio. Another little exercise, television. When you're watching the news tonight, or next time you get a chance to watch the news, what does television use? Uh, use? Is it present tense? Is it past tense? Or is it a combination? Check it out. Online, uh, which has basically transformed print writing. On, online, as with the inverted triangle that no longer uh, is entirely true because on online writing you can actually build the structure of your story to end up in a conclusion, which you would never do in, in writing for a newspaper. Um, the rules are being broken and they're being explored. So it can be in the past tense, quite often is, when it's emulating a newspaper, but also people writing, um, I guess, a little more out there, uh, it can be in the present tense.